It's a $255 billion industry, just online courses. The industry average of who's completing those courses is only three to 5%, meaning 95% of the people that are betting on like changing their life through buying a course, they don't actually get it. What most course creators are resigned to the idea that it just can't be done or people just don't learn, or yeah. people just don't have enough control over their life to actually go through and finish a thing. It's a million percent their fault, but what Carrie's proven is that not only can it be done, but what everyone else thinks is not actually true, and it's highly lucrative to get them to actually be able to do it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 97 of the Andrew Deitch Podcast. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a great and positive week. I know I sure am. It's been it's been a while since I've uploaded two episodes in one week, so I think I think this is a good sign. I think it's a sign that uh, things are ramping back up. Lots of really exciting stuff happening this week, so make sure you're subscribed and all that good stuff. If this is your first time checking out the show, thank you so much. I know there's a million other things you could be listening to right now, and the fact that you chose this podcast is pretty mind-boggling, but it's also very... Very humbling. Um, thank you guys for being such great supporters. If you're new here and you don't know, this show is all about having conversations with people who I find to be very interesting. Maybe they're entrepreneurs, athletes, uh, entertainers, influencers, um, whatever. And we meet up in person to have awesome conversations where they share their story and where they got how they got to where they are today. And all my podcasts are recorded in person, like I said, so I'm very lucky that I was able to catch up with my friends, Dr. Carrie Rose and LaShawn Kerb, while they were here in Atlanta. And if you don't already know, Dr. Carrie Rose is an educator, an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, and last year she was actually listed as one of Huffington Post's must-follow women entrepreneurs. And she holds her EDD in educational leadership from the University of Central Florida, her doctoral dissertation was on professional development, and she's best known for her innovative teaching strategies and methodology. Right now, she her current research is in course completion rates and connecting online course development with the science of learning. And her partner, LaShawn Kerb, he is the creative side. He's the multimedia strategist. He's an influencer. He's also a keynote speaker, which is pretty cool. And his focus is on helping entrepreneurs create a life of freedom by reaching their ideal audience with the right positioning and then monetizing those ideas with digital products. Um, he's been featured, his, his prior work um, has been featured in Forbes, Red Bull, Universal, NBC, BET, VH1, PBS, Smirnoff, BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, and much more. He's really talented and together they're a freaking powerhouse team that helps online course creators reach their true potential by using proven methods to create courses that not only get completed, but are also extremely effective. And during our conversation, we talked all about how they got started in the space, how they met, misconceptions about online courses, what common mistakes course creators make, and also why Dr. Carey is not encouraging her kids to go to college, which is pretty crazy coming from someone who has three college degrees. <laughs> that was pretty crazy, and this was a badass conversation. I learned so much, and so without any further ado, please welcome my guests, Dr. Kerry Rose and LaShawn Curry. Sweet. Well, I am here with LaShawn Curb. Am I saying it correctly? Yeah, you nailed it, dude. There we go. And Dr. Kerry Rose. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you guys? Awesome. You? Cool. We're doing awesome, man. Well, we're here in Atlanta, which is probably uncommon for you guys. Yes. Not uncommon for me, but very exciting this to have so you guys. It's so man, for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you guys are here from Orlando, right? Correct. Orlando, Florida. Very fun stuff. And um, like I mentioned, normally I kind of kick things off just by asking you guys to share kind of who you are and what you do in your own words, because... Obviously, I've kind of introduced you already, but it's always it's always good to have it in your own words, what you do. Sure. So, well, what we do is what we believe. And what we believe is that this moment in time, uh, more than any other moment in human history, purpose-driven entrepreneurs have this tool at their disposal to make a massive impact on a global scale through the power of online courses if they... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My microphone was slipping, apparently. If they take responsibility for their student success. Very cool. 
Yeah. I agree. With the microphone, too. That's yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just to zip it up for a you a little bit. I had to zip up my hoodie, y'all. I mean, <laughs> to, ins- to explain it in regular people terms. Am I not regular? You're extraordinary. <laughs> and that's not even, you know, <laughs> you're extraordinary. Um, what I like to think of it is like we, we help people turn their passion or their ideas into something tangible that they can use as a mechanism to create freedom in their life um, in in the space of online courses like carrie's mm-hmm. a doctor of education and she takes i mean when she built our process i mean she took over 500 plus research studies of what actually causes people to learn when they take online courses mm-hmm. and why that's important is if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to like really get your message out there is you want it to like if someone buys it from you like you want it to work for them so that they can go deeper and they can get those wins and and so that for us is like what's so significant about it it's like it's the freedom of it um to kind of back up a little bit of of why i even care about that is like when i was um six years old like i i grew up in pittsburgh a little mining town you might have heard of it um, best football team ever, Steelers. Um. <laughs> I actually had I had um, Heinz Ward's agent on my podcast. Did you really? Pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, so that. any any Pittsburgh Steelers fans definitely go for the to win. That one. Pittsburgh for the win. Yeah, indeed. Um, so I grew up really just um, in this kind of crappy town or whatever, um, well, crappy subtown of Pittsburgh, and. <laughs> This one day, I was I was at home playing hide and go seek with my um, my sister and my cousin. And my mom happened to be home that this particular day. Um, she wasn't usually home because she worked like a couple jobs and was working like trying to build a biz- business and all that kind of stuff. So she wasn't usually home this particular day. She was, and so um, my cousin and my sister got the idea that they were gonna go like play hide and go seek, but they were gonna hide upstairs. And I was like, man, I'm gonna go hide in the basement because our basement at the time was like the no-go zone. It was like super scary, super dark, moldy, cruddy. Like nobody would go there. Were, <laughs> like it made no was sense. It the best place to hide a dead was, body. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, so I go down. Like I, I can still see myself. Like I'm walking down the steps, and you know, I get down there, and it's like kind of flooded in the basement. My mom has this old refrigerator in the back of it. And I unplugged it, took out the racks, and I hid inside the refrigerator. But I ended up like trying to get situated, I knocked it over on the door. And so I slammed this thing down, I'm trapped inside there, I'm clawing, I'm screaming, and I'm like, you know, I can't really, I can't breathe. And I'm in there for probably 25 minutes or so before anyone ever discovers there's anything wrong. Whoa. And she, she just happened to get out the phone, happened to like hear me down there like making a fuss and came over, kicked the thing open, and like literally like I get out of there, I'm gasping for air, and like literally that was the moment for me like, I discovered like I need to have freedom. I need to choose how my life goes for me. And that became like the theme of how I, I see things. Like how can I access that? You know, today it looks like entrepreneurship and what are the ways that we can access that? But like it started really early. Wow. That was when you were what, six you said? Six years old. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. That's and I know that story. only because I lived in this place called Homewood and I, you know, the school I went to at that time, I went to 14 different schools before I got out of high school, but I can always track it back by what school I went to at the time that, you know, so, yeah. Very, very Freedom. cool. That's awesome. And Carrie, you said um, that you kind of had a, a traumatic experience as well when you were younger. I know. My mama dropped me on my head. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> but and me, me, real smart. She made me real smart. That was amazing. amazing. <laughs> Two degrees of theater yeah. later. Um, no, so <laughs> I witnessed a pretty traumatic experience when I was about four years old. Um, and what it left me with was something called selective mutism. So if you can just picture the shyest person you've ever seen and then multiply it by 100. I didn't speak really. I could physically and didn't mm. for about six years of my life. Wow. Um, I also have dyslexia. So between not speaking and the dyslexia, Um, I started fifth grade not knowing how to read, Um, and it was the 80s, you just got passed on at the time, it was a different kind of landscape as far as education was concerned, but I had one teacher at Allen Elementary School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Miss D. Taylor, take me from that shell to the highest standardized test score that school had seen in one year. 
Wow. So, I mean, really just completely unlocking human potential, right? And so I saw what the difference was that one person could make in another human's life if they A, cared, and B, knew what to do. Um, I spent 10 years in public ed myself, working as a teacher. I should probably say, because I'm like, everybody did. Um, <laughs> 12, actually, right? Um, so, well, 13. Um, if you <laughs> spend 10 years working in public ed, primarily in schools with high percentages of students from low socioeconomic backgrounds. So they would go home on Friday and you didn't know if they were going to eat until Monday morning, that mm-hmm. kind of environment. So I saw a lot of kids with a lot of difficulties because in that kind of um, socioeconomic background, uh, they usually tend to have greater struggles, right? So I've worked with every kind of student, every kind of situation, of course, ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, um, autism, deaf and hard of hearing, uh, selective mutism as well, learning disabled. So you name it, I've seen it. Um, And I just kind of attacked everything with that same kind of passion that she had. You know, like how do we really give our heart to each of these children? And then what are the strategies that's gonna take to move the needle forward every one of them with all of their intricacies, Mm. right? Um, And I had one class one year where we actually leveled the fourth grade students. So I had the bottom out of seven classes at one of the worst schools in (laughs) Florida. (laughs) So they like ranked the classes? So this is like the best class? Did the kids know that? Fuck no, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You can say fuck, I don't care. (laughs) That's amazing. No, that would have been horrible for them. No, yeah. They're like 18 now and they're probably like- I'm glad that that's the case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, so. Anyway, so yeah, they, we ranked the children, um, and then my class had, you know, if they weren't already established as special needs, they had, um, they were labeled like, not really labeled, they didn't have a high enough IQ to qualify for special needs. So mm. their, their IQ was already so low that there wasn't a discrepancy between their ability level and their IQ, so therefore they didn't get any special services. I took that huh. class and created the greatest learning gains that school had ever seen with a class wow. in one year. So, I mean, essentially becoming Mrs. Taylor, Mrs. Taylor, giving a shit and knowing what to do. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it's just powerful <laughs> stuff, but I mean, every strategy I ever use is research-based. I don't just make things up. I look at analysis. I look at different meta-analysis. So the, the things that we've used to create the formula that we use for online courses now, it's all based on over hundreds, it's hundreds of research studies. It's not like, oh, you know what, I tried this one thing, this one thing that worked this one time, so I'm gonna do it again. It's like, no, there were hundreds of studies done and it says that this has the strongest effect size. Meaning like, you know, nine times out of 10, this is gonna make the biggest yeah. result, so we're gonna do this thing, you know? And that was kind of where I kept it inside of that classroom as well and giving a shit. Um, So I decided to go get my doctorate in ed leadership. I was thinking I was gonna work for the state um, or federal level of the Department of Education. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go make a difference because I can't do one class at a time. I'm like, where can I do something bigger? Mm -hmm. So I'm getting my doctorate and I'm like, okay, I'm learning all about the bureaucracy and (laughs) and all of these departments. And I'm like, I just don't really wanna go play in that because that sounds horrible and depressing Mm -hmm. so I'm sounds like fun politics of everything yeah I'm like I wanted to (laughs) enjoy my life too but still make a difference Mm -hmm. right so I'm sitting at a world of beer one night trying to figure all of this shit out writing my dissertation on professional development and and walk three guys and they introduced me to the world of internet marketing and online marketing and uh, yeah um they said things like affiliate marketing and SEO, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, what is this? And they were like, well, here. They kind of took me under their wing and gave me access to online course after online course to teach me online marketing. And I'm like, wow, What this year was this? 2012. Wow. Yeah, so it was great, and it also showed an area that we could definitely improve in. So I'm mm. like taking these online courses and going, okay, this is fascinating, and thank God I'm smart and I write fast. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, because my critical thinking brain is thinking, okay, well, how do I apply this? Okay, well, how do I figure this out on a deeper level? Okay, well, how do I learn this to be independent? I'm not looking at it as, okay, I'll just do what you say, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I started like going down into that path. But, you know, as I branched out on my own, and then of course with LaShawn, we started to see the world of online courses, not just in that, you know, they're not just using the right strategies as far as learning is concerned. We're also seeing it as like, there's a, an area of weakness here in, in terms of our course completion rates. So on average, 
it's about a three to five percent completion rate and a now 255 billion dollar industry which is up from 107 billion dollars two years ago wow i've had clients get up to 96 percent completion rates holy shit so that's if, amazing yeah i mean even if it's somewhere in the middle like yeah. even if they just got 50 percent completion rates we're yeah. starting to hear back from people in the personal development space that are seeing patterns within their own data suggesting that if people don't complete one course, they don't buy the next one. Now that's personal mm. development, not professional development. They're two very different things, but it's definitely something to take note of and to really like look at in terms of like, what are we doing to help these people? So Lashawn and I created our uh, three pillars of completion around that, that we walk all of our clients through to try to get them those results. Very cool. Yeah, man. So wait, so I missed the part of the story when you guys met, though. Tinder, so man. You... She didn't say. <laughs> she was saying no, other things. That's what I'm saying. I, we, we skimmed over it. We skimmed yeah. over well, it. Well, I just did the work stuff. Well, we met, and then yes. we fell in love, and then we started working together. So okay. it wasn't like Well, I was instant. wondering what the case was. I was, like, was it like business partners first? Was it... Was it love at first sight and then it was business? Like what It was, was love the... at first sight for me. Okay. And then I had to make him a couple sweet potato pies, wait a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, I actually burnt the uh. sweet potato pies, but. <laughs> <laughs> you were joking. <laughs> no, I, you know, I was paying too much attention to him. But, um, uh, you know. Burnt the sweet potato pies. I burnt pies. the sweet, sweet potato, potato pies. Sweet potato pies is my favorite pie. Wow. And she's very strategic with her approaches. And she's mm-hmm. like. What's your favorite pie? We're going to make it. Well, no, it was right after Thanksgiving. <laughs> and what it was is I was a part of, I remember some of the conversations here. I was a part of the um, Space Coast Basket Brigade. So Basket Brigade is something that Tony Robbins established to feed families at Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. right? Because he didn't have a meal at Thanksgiving and somebody gave one to him when he was a kid and he remembers it. So it's something that he inspires lots of people to do. And, and Space Coast, I can't remember how many people we fed that year. It was something. Lots of people. It was really insane. How I was going to say, I've, I've heard him quote numbers that are astronomical. Well, yeah, but he has like a lot of his pe- people in different parts of the country like that do this every yeah, year. So yeah. he his organization helps, but then like people take, it's like a grassroots kind of thing. That's awesome. But like I was one of the um, organizers of the event that year. And so like I'm at the headquarters and I was like, we got pies on pies on pies on pies. <laughs> like, and there was this like thing, pumpkin pies coming in. And he's like, pumpkin? Totally how we met. Yeah, no, no. It's not how we met. It's how the sweet potato pie thing happened. <laughs> we met like two weeks prior to this. But then pumpkin he was like. Pumpkin pie to me is like a super watered down version of sweet potato uh, pie. So sweet, like pumpkins here, sweet potato, like just pumpkins takes it like to the next level. Step. Yeah. I see. I it's see. actually sweet potato pie is way better. I, it's, I really, it's the pie that. White but people think it. is sweet potato pie. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Until they eat it. My mom like, oh my makes God. a really good What's sweet so potato casserole where she the, puts like nuts and stuff on top of it and like sometimes yeah, marshmallows. Yeah, the fact you said casserole yeah. see, it goes to my point. No, yeah. sweet potato pa- casserole is really good. But then it's Patty LaBelle down. has some sweet potato pie at Walmart. <laughs> it's like four bucks. Get you some because that's like is. It's good, good pie. It's, can make. I don't know about that. Okay, my grandmother made some pretty amazing sweet potato I pie. I didn't know your grandma. But it is pretty awesome. If you That's haven't really had any, we're gonna make sure you're. Someone made a song care. about good. it on YouTube. It's nuts. Sweet potato um, pie. In case but you yeah. guys didn't uh, hear that, she totally skipped over the Tinder part. We met on Tinder. <laughs> was that real? That Tinder? was real. That's awesome. <laughs> That's legit. <laughs> we met on Tinder. We went out the night of the time that we. She's like, "Ooh, you're so dreamy." <laughs> literally what I texted him ooh you so dreamy you so dreamy exclamation mark winky face um, we no. just connected um, what was the mess- What was the initial message did you message him first or did he message you yeah what was the mis- initial message I think I said hi and then he messaged me and said something like what are you passionate about ooh, and ooh. I said I know right he's a killer in for it. Ooh, ooh. and I said I wanted Rose. to know that it, wasn't, it wasn't like a strategy I no, wanted to know no no and I said growth, and he said growth. Tell me more about that. And at the time, I was volunteering at Tony's events. So I was like, well, you know, Tony Robbins, I volunteer crew for his events. And LaShawn was like, well, I did Landmark. And I was like, dun, 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 because, of course, I know what that <laughs> is. And I had on my list of what I wanted in a man must be into personal development. I, I wasn't necessarily trying to impress, but I'm glad that it did. 
it wasn't an impressed thing, but I was like, okay, there's a possibility that I might have manifested you. Now we need to go further. So. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I feel yeah. like a lot of people, I think at least maybe five, six years ago, Tinder was like still kind of like a little bit sketchy and people were like kind it's of... still sketchy. It was kind of like sketchy. Uber was. It was kind of like Uber was. You know, like, yeah, I yeah. don't know if I'll get in another person's car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get in another person's bed. Or, or, or Airbnb, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Airbnb, right? Same yeah. thing. Tinder was the another I'm, person's bed You're going to have people stay in your house, <laughs> in your house, and they're going to be money. Tinder and Airbnb, <laughs> Airbnb are both ways Airbnb. that you can sleep in a stranger's <laughs> bed. Yeah. Just, to, just for In case you guys didn't know. <laughs> There's a couple yeah, more steps was... you might have to go through on Tinder, but it's um, definitely or less, or less, steps. or less, yeah, more velocity, it, yeah, uh, yeah. No security code yes. on the front door, yeah. <laughs> and when you do it through Airbnb, hopefully that person is not there, right? Yeah, exactly. Hope so. Oh my god, I don't know. whatever you're into. Um. Anyways, but what I was saying is, but actually, like dating apps are like really amazing because you can easily kind of filter through like if you meet someone randomly at the bar it might take a while before you realize like oh this person is awful if they're a good fit right yeah Yeah. exactly and it's very fascinating how through dating apps like if you are approaching it the correct way like you can really i feel like social media is doing that for friendships and business connections and all that kind of too because you can filter and see the kind of things that people would say and Mm -hmm. kind of what their political affiliations or thoughts are about racism and this and that like you can kind of filter out like wow i don't really like the way that person thinks and yeah you can kind of get a feel for what it's like to interact with them and then like you're easily able to assess if it's someone that you really resonate with Mm -hmm. well i think also just being super true to yourself when you're having conversations whether it's social or otherwise like on our first date I said something that would be totally outlandish to any normal human being just because I was like, well, if he is the person that I was trying to bring into my space, then he it's cool. He needs to be weird. And then if it's not, then I'll know really quickly that this is done. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, I believe time and space are malleable. And he was like, yeah, me too. And I was like, all right, well, you're still around. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it is malleable. I mean, even if you look at how it works, like space and time continue, it bends. So we already know that it's it's literally malleable, meaning the way that we interact with time is not necessarily the way time exists all over the universe. You know, I, and I guess maybe that's a particular person that would have that conversation mm-hmm. with you, but it's literally malleable. It's not the same, like there's not the same amount of time that it takes to complete a day on every planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? That means by itself that space and time is malleable. Do you that see why true. I kept him around? Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and and there's some people that would hear that conversation and just be like, uh, wait a second. No, we I might have lost what, a few what, people that yeah, are right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the type of person that's like, wait, well, yeah, tell, yes, let's talk about that. You know, that's awesome. But like being I, I true to that's yourself. That's her way of saying like, I like weird shit. Well, yeah. no, but being true to yourself in whatever form you are, you can find your person faster. Yeah. Like, I think it's more people that are trying to impress and trying to put on the whatever fake act that they have, not really knowing, but really just being scared. Let's mm-hmm. just say it that way. Like, everyone's a little scared and a little vulnerable, and they're putting themselves out there to try to find their person. So it's, like, easier to get a little plastic mm-hmm. and, and hide a little bit. Yeah. But it, it'll take a lot longer that way. My thing that pisses me off on Tinder is when every single picture has one of those Snapchat um, filters over your face that yeah. like literally like hides face? what you look like really? or, you get or like slims your face or whatever I'm just like uh, I, picture from yeah. up here yeah yeah or it's just like Camera this angles is can a be picture tricky, of my especially butt. with filters yeah. my goodness yeah yeah I guess it all depends on what you're looking for but anyways yeah. that's really cool that you guys met on Tinder actually yeah I think so. Yeah. We did but you know it, it quickly evolved because like we at the time, I was working um, in a, a software company mm-hmm. and doing a lot of like on the side, like commercial branding stuff, multimedia, like photography, mm-hmm. I'm super into that. Um, but I, <clears throat> prior to that, one of the clients that I got was um, with Universal and they used like a bunch of my work for like all these big projects and um I didn't like billboards. I, I billboards and magazines like all over the world like and I barely like I didn't make anything out of it in terms of money mm-hmm. and it was like literally in that moment I'm like okay 
I know that what I have and what I do is valuable. I just don't know how to turn it into the thing that mm -hmm. creates more freedom for me. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of like artists run into that, even if they get to the the point where some big branding company or some big company wants to use their stuff and wants to leverage their thing, like how do they do it properly and how do they get the right protection and all these kinds of things. And I was like, there's gotta be a better, more efficient way to handle this. Cause like I was great at what I did. I, I didn't know jack shit about that part of the process. And, mm -hmm. and I just felt like people like me could easily be taken advantage of. Totally. And I, I was hungry to find a different way to, to manage that. Yeah, and because also value in that space is so subjective. You know, like I was thinking about this earlier today actually because I drove by one of my friend's um, old houses or lack thereof. So he used to live on this farmhouse. It was a one uh, floor ranch house on this giant piece of land right in the middle of this like really, really expensive, nice suburb here in, in outside of Atlanta. And I drove by thinking I was gonna see his house and whoever owned the house had sold the land and they built an entire neighborhood on that piece of land. Wow. So it's so crazy because like to him and his family, maybe they could use, you know, they could think, oh, well, we could sell the house for X amount of money. But to whoever bought that land yeah. and built an entire subdivision the value and of it? created yeah. exactly like what is the highest perceived value of this property? Like. I was floored when I drove past because it's this beautiful, amazing neighborhood. I think um, I, I when I talked to him, he said there's gonna be like a hundred homes built on the land. That's wow. crazy. and it used to literally just home it his it used to just house his just one family with two kids, a few dogs, few animals, like yeah. all that. But wow. now there's literally gonna be hundreds of people living on that plot of land. I feel so like I feel like business nuts. in life is a lot is is that way often. Mm -hmm. It's like it's really hard to to kind of see what the possibilities look like down the road mm -hmm. in in how to properly assess them and you know, how you're gonna really manage that. Like it's hard to see until you're like creating it. Mm-hmm. You got to dream a little bit. You got to dream a little bit, and exactly. you got to you got to throw yourself in the fire a little bit too. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be willing to take the risks and take the falls and fall on the sword, and you know, take the wins too, mm -hmm. and celebrate them. So. Yeah, and like Carrie, like you were saying earlier, you know, you wanted to get to this like, I need if I need to impact all these people, I need to go to like this federal level so that I can impact all these people, and then you realized it wasn't what you thought it was, and. And yeah. one thing that comes to mind when I think about you guys kind of creating this platform for other people is, um, I think it's like a Steve Jobs quote where he was kind of saying like, your art can impact like so many people, but if you can create a tool or like a an instrument that allows other people to create their own thing, that is infinitely more valuable. And I'm not quoting him exactly, but it was like the gist of what he was saying. And that's kind of like what he created with like the Mac, you know, it's mm -hmm. like he created this computer that gave all these creative people this outlet, you know, giving them the free iMovie software and GarageBand and all this stuff, like, was enabling these these young creators the and stuff. The world, yeah. To, yeah. It literally changed the world. It's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, and you can compare me to Steve Jobs any day of the week. Yeah, I totally totally will. take it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, it's a lot like that, right? Yeah. I mean, in our industry, it's it's a $255 billion industry just online courses, right? Mm -hmm. And the industry average of who's completing those courses is only three to 5%, mm -hmm. meaning 95% of the people that are betting on like changing their life through buying a course or something like they don't actually get it. I mean, and so what most companies or people that are course creators, um, they're, most of them are resigned to the idea that it just can't be done or mm -hmm. people just don't learn or yeah. people just don't, you know, they don't, have enough control over their life to actually go through and finish the thing so they're not going to get it it's, it's a million percent their fault but what carrie's proven is that not only can it be done but it can signi like it, it is there's so much value attached to actually getting them to get it done mm -hmm. you know like if you're only getting five percent of the people that come into your marketing funnel but 95 percent fall out now some of them might stay on your email list but now they're not responsive you know because they didn't get that initial value but like if you can up that number by just doing it better you know, I think where people fall into the hole is like they have no idea how to do it better. And 
mostly how they're gauging their own success is if they're able to sell it properly. Mm. They, right? well, usually if they're able to sell it and what their refund rate is. Mm. Yeah, so not a lot of people are refunding. I mean, they're not complaining a lot, yeah. but, but they're able to sell it. So they're, so most of the entrepreneurs, business owners are like, hey, I'm, I'm making millions of dollars in online courses. So it's doing well. Not like, how is this impacting my students' lives and, and how is this actually serving them? Mm-hmm. Where are they falling out? Where are they falling off? Where are they being impacted? So she's been able to prove like what everyone else thinks is not actually true and it's highly lucrative to get them to actually be able to do it by doing it better. Mm-hmm. It makes actual, it, totally it makes total Jobs sense when you think level. about it that way, but you're, I, you're right. Like a lot of these guys that are selling online courses, you know, a lot of people that come to mind, a lot of them are like salesmen at heart. So they think just like, Oh, I'm getting tons of people to enter my course. Yeah, that's like the metric. The selling of it is the win for them. Mm-hmm. But like, how does it, how do you lend the value with your audience? Exactly. Well, even if we just look at the ones that are like coming at it from a true place, because I think of sales as service, right? So if they're even coming at it with their hearts and going, you know what, I really want to help these people, but then kind of leaving it to the the treadmill mentality, like I really want to help them. I sold them. I did what I could. But you know what? People buy treadmills, and by January fifteenth, they're kind of like over it already. You know, so what am I going to do about it? And mm-hmm. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. And for those of y'all out there that are listening, I hope you understand this. I look at it like these people are guests in my Italian restaurant, mm. right? And if I have plates of food all over the place and, you know what, only 3% of the customers that, you know, come into my restaurant finish their plates and everybody else walks out with some degree of leftovers on their plate, I'm going to be looking at a lot of different things. I'm going to be like, hey, did you... Did they get the doggy bag? Or are they just leaving it here? What's the percentage still on here? Like, what's going on? What do I need to throw out? Like, oh, they didn't mm-hmm. like the pork chops? Man, I need to get rid of that shit. You know, and like start examining it, examining it and really looking at like, am I doing the best to serve once they show up? Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Because I, I do think a lot of people do, comp- they, they use that like treadmill analogy, even in, oh, yeah. you know, like I was involved in like a network marketing company for a while and that was like a big thing. They're always talking about the numbers, like you're going to invite so many people to your thing and only this many people will show up and then only this many people will join and then only this much people will be successful. Yeah. And I was, was a little bit like yeah, weird but- by because it it's like, <laughs> yeah. yes, what you're saying makes sense when you do break down the numbers, but like. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better yeah. way. Yeah. I try not to fault anybody that's doing the way they're doing right no. now and just look at it like, okay, but if you if you saw that there are other possibilities, like for anybody that can hear me and you when you heard me, like we've gotten up to 96% completion. It's like, holy shit, that's on the other end of the spectrum. That's amazing. That's not like a, whoop, you know, that not just a little bit or a tiny push or yeah, BFD, right? This All is the way like, the this is on the other side of the spectrum. So like, literally what, flipping. Uh, yeah. So like, what I find in my life is that if I know something is possible for somebody else, I know it's possible for me, and once it's possible for me, it's probable for me. Mm. Into just a bonus that like, people are sixty to seventy percent more likely. To actually purchase from you again if they complete and if they complete right so they mm-hmm. complete the thing that they were trying to get that initial win on and now they're really to ready and to, to go in deeper and invest and that's mm. when they are more likely to, to actually get larger wins in their life and make a larger investment investment with you and your business you know the the course is usually like at the top end of the funnel that's a, one of the things that gets them in early entry mm. you know and they may spend money there but like once they get that actual initial value, now they're ready to really go in deep with you. Hmm. But not if they don't like initially get that, that help that they needed. Like yeah. not only do they lose that belief in that the fact that you can help them and you're really engaged in that process, but not they fall out. But if they do, now they're looking at masterminds. Now they're looking at like long term consulting and coaching and sharing your brand and your process with other people, you know, become really championing your brand. And that's mm-hmm. when that transformation between the relationship happens. Yeah. You know, so. And I think like you were saying, you know, a lot of times we put it on the, you know, whoever's running the course is kind of putting it on the, the, per, the participant, the student to complete it, you know, like, okay, well, if they didn't complete it, they didn't complete it, that's on them. And I think a lot of people that buy courses and don't complete them put it on them too, because they're thinking, well, I bought his last, I, I would want to join his mastermind, but I mean, I didn't even complete his course, like. Mm-hmm. But they don't I'm know why committed. either though. Yeah, they, they exactly. don't know. They don't even know what it was about the thing usually that kind of took them out of it, mm-hmm. that lost them along the way. Like they mm-hmm. don't, it's not looked that deep enough for people to even assess it. 
Yeah. Here's the way I look at responsibility. I, if, if I'm sitting in the room and you and I are both responsible adults, right? And we both have this thing and somewhere in the middle is the thing that we're both responsible for. I don't control you. I do control me. I control every way that I show up to make sure that that thing that you're supposed to be responsible for also, like it's as high of you know degrees of integrity as I can make it on my end. And that's really all that I ask of course creators and everything that I put my heart and soul into. You know, we did a lot of research going into our completed course, the completed course book um, that we put together that is just, you know, like all of the strategies that we could find that are out there to really, you know, turn that up. Like how do we get it to a point of more and more completion? How do we get it to a point of more and more consumption? How do we really get it to a point of more and more an application? And ultimately, how many more lives can we change? Hmm. Right? Because like eventually the completion isn't gonna matter. It only matters right now in the form of online education that we have at this moment in time. But eventually we're gonna get into a lot more intuitive processes where people are going in, they're finding the one thing that they need and they're getting out. Mm. You know, because we don't need to take their time. Taking their time isn't giving value. Giving value is giving value. Taking time is taking time. Mm. You know, it's not the same equation. So we're going to need to figure out how we can, you know, charge for the value and not for the time that we're giving and really just get them to the point. But right now, the way we've got courses structured is if you don't have time and seat, you're not going to get the end result. But it's just the way we've got it set up at the moment. Yeah. To me, it just equates to like having more fun. Have. More freedom and more fun. That's I want like, everyone yeah. to have more fun. Guys, yeah. go out I and think, have more fun. I think people want to have more fun and freedom. I really <laughs> totally. think they do. Oh, no, I agree. I mean, and I think a lot of times, like one of the biggest things when doing an online course is not necessarily like you don't think the value's there. It's that you, you're you like, I don't know if I have the time or the actual motivation for myself. Like, I don't even know if I'll be able to make myself go through this. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. you're like, I know I need this, but like... I don't know, man. Like, I also really love playing video games or whatever. You know what I mean? Right, right. And so it's like you you, you don't know if you have it on yourself. Okay, well, I'm going to give you two different courses, okay? And I want you to decide. I want you to tell me which one you want to take tonight or you want to buy tonight, right? Okay, Okay. the first one is 25 hours long. And the second one is two hours long. I'm totally choosing the two hour. Right? (laughs) But when people go to make these things, do you know what they do? I had 25,000. They try to give them with as much value as possible. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give them every piece of value I have. I'm going to tell them how to do everything I can possibly tell them how to do. Mm. And it's not good for anybody because more than likely, if you're trying to solve every problem at once, you're not focused enough. You're teaching like a mile wide and an inch deep and it really needs to be vice versa on that. Mm, Totally. You need to teach one thing and teach the heck out of it to the point where they get it and that doesn't take a lot of time and it can get them an actual result that they're like, oh, thank God you came into my life. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, it's interesting about like you were saying, taking up the time for the sake of taking time. I think sometimes authors are like that. Like they want to write a book about something totally. and the point could be yeah. given in like an essay. <laughs> right. But they really have this like aspiration to be an author. Yeah. So they I'm write the whole book. And I'm you know, like for example, you know. like, you know, yeah. not to knock on anybody specific, but like, you know, I could probably knock on him, Grant Cardone, like with the 10X rule or whatever. It's like, okay, <laughs> we get it. Put 10 him. times the amount of work into it and you'll, you know, always get awesome results. Mm-hmm. Like it could be like a blog post or like whatever. But it like, it, I felt like when I was reading that book, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like by the 100th page, I'm like, let's wrap this up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so Spare me now, please. Put yeah, you know, and I think that uh, in the age of wanting to consume things quickly, people are intimidated to you know they see like the length of a podcast and they're intimidated to jump in they see the length of a youtube video and they're intimidated to jump in Mm -hmm. they see how many episodes there are in the tv show and they're intimidated to jump in so and unless of course it really speaks to them like i'll I'll go listen to i'll go go listen to like hardcore history Mm -hmm. and it's like two and a half hours per episode oh yeah no, and I'm with you too. Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, if anyone hasn't listened to it, it's amazing. It's amazing. It is freaking amazing. It's like and watching Game of Thrones through the ear. Exactly. Exactly. It's an audio <laughs> it's an it's an audio experience for sure. But and I'm the same way. I love listening to long podcasts as well. And so but the thing about podcasts that's interesting to me is that since I'm sticking it in my ears, I can still be productive and do yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's for what sure. I love about that's it. That's the thing I like about it. Uh-huh. And sometimes that's what 
that's why I am so open to doing that. And I sometimes am intimidated by like, for example, a TV show or even a course or something. Because if it's yeah. video, I'm like, I can't just do this while I'm driving or whatever. I'm like, I need to like sit down but and do this and it's a whole thing. It still gets really that. vivid for me though. What? Like if I listen to something like that. Like, yeah. I, it, it gets really vivid for me because I'm so listening that I'm now visioning and picturing and experiencing. And then, like, I will become lost in the thing Yeah. also. So it's not a very yeah. good tool for me to multitask, but it's definitely an experience. One thing that I've heard it, that is interesting that people say is once you, like, are after you listen to something or while you're listening to something, if you take a walk... Because you start to like associate the things you're listening to and the things you just learned like to the things that you're seeing on your walk, which mm-hmm. is, like you're almost like attaching like a visual uh, association with something that you heard. I don't know if that's true, but like sometimes when I, I've been listening to podcasts in my backyard or something, and then when I go back outside, I'll like see that thing and think about what I was listening to on the podcast, which is kind of crazy. Well, I mean, just, you know, thinking about this and keeping this in mind, if you were to create a a course what would stop you from having audio yeah no it wouldn't you know and i actually would prefer that in some cases right i mean so i recommend for all of our clients to go ahead and film the videos strip the audio have the audio transcribed yeah and have all three you know methods available for any of your students to go through so that they can just choose which one suits them best the the idea is you want to get them the result that you promised yep you want to change their situation and if you do it out of your way out of vanity, mm. right? Or your way because that's the way you learn. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help everybody. Yep. You know, a lot of times we create these courses for us, <laughs> mm-hmm. or we create them based on what we've seen. So, like, if you've seen course videos that are like forty-five minutes long, it's like, well, that's not based on any research whatsoever. It's actually just based on, well, when I was in high school, my periods were forty-five minutes long, which is really based on the teacher needs a bathroom break, yeah. right? And you got to switch classes now. Yeah, there's nothing to do with learning. In fact, they've done studies and found that you know people fall off uh, online courses at the seven-minute mark. Wow. So your video should be like three to five minutes long. Yeah, totally. Take a break. Come back. Do another thing. That's so, awesome. So what kind of things do you do when you're not doing courses, Dr. Carrie Rose? I really like kayaking, but I don't go enough. <laughs> I go out on my friend Ian's boat with you. <laughs> I like craft beer. I hang out with my kids. Yeah. Not with beer. <laughs> not together. You guys might not know this about Dr. Carrie Rose, but she's got killer dance moves. I have great dance moves. Wow. And yeah. great choices in music, except for when she's upset with me. Um, oh gosh! In which case, she plays '80s rock, so I we can were, vomit to myself. He he said something that ticked me off on the way to Georgia, and so we're in the car from Florida to Georgia, and then we got stuck behind. Oh gosh, there was a car accident up ahead, so we were there for a little longer. And during that time, I don't know what the heck, and I don't want to relive it, honey, but just to let them know, I, I started playing Bon Jovi. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, you know what? He'll really love. I don't have any particular like <laughs> fun fact. I've seen Bon Jovi live. Have, have you? you really? Yes, I have. Were oh they good? God. Brownie it points. It was lost. interesting. Okay. <laughs> it was. It was. It was objectively good. Yes, not my favorite music, but I got. Right. It was like it was a weird situation where my um, girlfriend at the time, her neighbor, something. It was something bad. Like her neighbor died or something. Oh shit! Sorry. And like the wife didn't want to go without her husband that just passed away. So she like gave sense. us the tickets and yeah. we're kind of like, sure, I guess we'll go to Bon Jovi. This will be a fun like yeah, it's a little weird transaction date or something. Yeah. Like it wasn't like we were super deep in the relationship. It was like, like yeah, this is a fun date. Go to Bon Jovi, and it was just a lot of like. A lot of like m- drunk like moms there. Yeah, that would have been me. I, yeah, I bet, I bet there's a lot of drunk moms. <laughs> yeah. I just can't get in. I, I don't know. I just can't get into like '80s rock, and I think it's just because I grew up with like soul music. My mom collected records when I was young. And my first concert was the Four Tops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just I listened to tons of R&B. I have R and B literally seeping through my pores at any given time. I could break into some <laughs> boys to men at any moment. And so like when I listen to that other stuff and, and there's a lot of different types of music that I really appreciate and like, but that is not one of them. <laughs> my first it. concert was Tom Petty, but and I've seen like a ton of classic rock, but like I listen to everything. Like literally everything. It's just that I usually listen to R and B and Do you hip-hop listen to Black Street? Because mm. that's what 
no he dignity, listens no to. So like, yeah. So when he's angry, it becomes like country or eighties rock. Oh, then gosh. it's punishment time. Punishment yeah, I'm gonna time. figure out a way to punish you when I'm. You mad. know what? Taylor Swift sounds good right now. Tay <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tay. Oh. <laughs> but no, the older Tay-Tay. albums, not the newer ones. I'm down with yeah, country. Say, I was like the new ones are like no, no, definitely no. very different. Why you gotta be so mean? <laughs> I, yeah. What's interesting Old to stuff. me about music. <laughs> Is like as the person starts to mature and have different experiences, and like you can hear their evolution through their music. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I don't, I don't think for her like it's any different. You know, when I see her videos, I feel like she's trying to like recapture the place that she was, but can't quite get there. I could be totally wrong, but that's just my assessment of it. But. No, but it's also kind of true because I also, I hate to say it, but I feel like Taylor Swift is kind of fake. I don't know. Really? I, you know, I don't know. Like I, I feel like she's trying to like. Pander. Taylor, can you just She's call? Doing a little yeah, more pop we'll have a conversation and, like, and we'll figure it out. But. Yeah, Taylor Swift, let's go. Like, come on. I know you want to be on my podcast. You've been like, <laughs> your manager has been hitting me up nonstop. Yeah. So let's just get you on the podcast. We'll clear this up once and for all. You yeah, know, honestly, but, that world is so crazy, though. It like, is. you don't know what those people like. They go through no. so much crazy stuff on a on a regular basis. Like, they can't take a shit. Without people trying to snap selfies of them and yeah. like put them on Instagram or like weird things like all the time like and it's consistent it's all day long like For it, sure. it's like unrelenting I I just would imagine over time like it, it breaks you down yeah I For bet sure. it would like really alter a person like who they trust like people come and like do weird things and, like steal money from them and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. man like a while back like I was listening to some show or whatever with Ryan Leslie like he he lost his backpack or something and someone stole his backpack is really what happened and they ransomed him for like a million dollars to sell him back his own laptop wow. with beats on it yeah isn't that messed, messed up, up. kanye's so messed cousin up. stole money from him and same thing stole his laptop mm-hmm. and he literally had to give money to his own cousin who stole it to him to back blackmailed him like it's crazy yeah that's messed up, man. As, yeah, I mean, you just never really know what those people go through, like when they get to that level of fame. So, I don't know. Yeah, there was a dude. I can't remember what the exact story was, but it was like he had a connecting flight, and he thought that he had left his laptop in the airport on this connecting flight, but then he had some program on his laptop where it was like a security program where when it opened it up, if he had reported it as stolen or something, it could take a picture. Of oh. the person oh, who was there, which oh, is pretty crazy. That's crazy. And the person that had opened it was the guy that was sitting next to him on the plane. He snatched it while he was sleeping in the plane. Oh, that's wow. see what I mean. Oh. So gangster. But he, but he Not was like cool. a famous musician. But I don't know if the guy next to him knew it. He probably mm-hmm. did. But <laughs> it was, uh, He's like, I'm yeah. Get this dude. But it was, fu- it was crazy because it ended up being this whole like Reddit story kind of thing, you know, where it's like you'll never believe what happened. But like, <laughs> you know, but it was. I thought that was pretty crazy that like he he thought it was an honest mistake on his part. Like, oh my gosh, I left in the airport. I feel so dumb. But really, he didn't have it in the airport. Yeah. It was man, that's too bad, man. Yeah. But yeah, snap. man. Once you <laughs> snippity snap, that reminds me of Kanye's it's poopity scoop, poopity scoop, scoopity scoop, scoopity scoop. 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 You know what? It's, people hate that song, right? And like, I love, love it. it. I love it too, because it's so ridiculous that someone would put that on an album. I love the balls yep. to do that, like. Poopity scoop, scoop a deep poopity poop. poop, poop, poop. <laughs> it took me right back to Cinderella, right? Yeah. The best <laughs> is like, poop. It, it's 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 kind of like you know um, the brand Supreme, like the streetwear brand Supreme. Yeah, of course. Are what? Are, okay, so Carrie doesn't we live on Earth. I don't. Bro. Earth. So Carrie, so so for people that don't know, except for Carrie, she's yeah. It's okay. Terrible. There's definitely people listening to this that don't know. So Supreme <laughs> is like this streetwear brand that started as like skateboard culture kind of thing. And now it has just evolved into basically they have such a cult following because That's everything insane. is like limited release and stuff and like people stand in line for hours and hours at the store and it's really hard to get all this stuff. They can put their logo on anything and people will buy it. Like they've I released mean, it crushes too. It crushes. Like this bag, if it had Supreme on it, it would go for twelve thousand dollars. I've seen that happen a few they, times. They did a collaboration Definitely. with Louis Vuitton recently and like those pieces are like stupid expensive. They're insane. Yeah, and like, but but the the thing is, it's like it's like Kanye knows, and and like so Supreme a while ago they released a brick, literally a a brick 
like a the construction brick with the Supreme logo stamped in it, sold for like thousands of dollars. And these people were just buying it. And it was almost like they were trolling their own fans. Like, we can sell you anything with our name on it. And I feel like that's kind of like what Kanye is sort of doing. Is a like, million percent. I know that I am at such a high level of cult following that I can literally make a song that took me five seconds to make saying scoop de dee poop <laughs> and people will listen to it. Like, I've, I have listened to it. Like, that's how he I've did. listened to it hundreds of times. <laughs> I have. Uh, I, I really have. It's pretty catchy. It's well, super it, catchy. It's, the weird thing, too, is like, if you listen to any of the interviews that he's having with people, like, he's, he's trying to say, like, the ability to free think and free choice and all these kinds of things, like, are being oppressed. And mm-hmm. he's, like, fighting against it with, like, tooth and nail. Like, every time he says something, people will say, hey, you didn't say it right, or you didn't, you shouldn't say it, you shouldn't like Trump and all this kind of stuff. Like, who cares if you like Trump or not? Like, he's really just assessing the fact that he can get as much attention as possible, and mm-hmm. then he can convert that energy into something else at yeah. any given time. Whether you love him or you hate what he's doing, you can love him and hate what he's doing, and still from the fuss that is caused about it, mm-hmm. like people that aren't familiar with his brand or the things that he's involved with, like they're now familiar. You exactly. know, whether And it doesn't matter if they're talking badly about it or loving every ounce of it. It still is able to convert it into something else. That's like exactly what Donald Trump did. That's a million percent what he did. I... I can't stand anything Donald Trump does. And it doesn't matter because it still gets tons of attention. Like, I have to literally fight back the the urge to go and say something. And not because I'm concerned about how people will think or feel about my thoughts about it. It's just I know that it just adds to the pot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, exactly. No. I don't Every time someone in. says something like, oh, my gosh, that new Kanye song sucks. It's just like. It doesn't yeah. matter. It gets more spends because people are, like, talking trash about it. Mm-hmm. Ugh craziness and the new album cover is literally like an iphone photo with green like scribble text on it it's just like literally i could have it, it's it's like modern art like yeah I, you could have made that but you didn't so haha yeah. like you know yeah. like, i mean anyone no. could have made this stupid scoop diddy poop song but i made it so you're gonna listen to it so haha i mean there's a, there's certain there's something to, to be said about like being proficient in an art form but i think where um what he's highlighting is really that the art form is not necessarily about the action or the art itself at all. It's literally about the being of it. Mm. Like, you know, Virgil is going in and he's, you know, remixing all these clothes and all these all these things. Like if you look at any of the like um off white things, like they're so simplistic. Off white being a brand, not the color. Yes. <laughs> off white brand. Let me let me be specific there. If you look at look like, at anything the that's off white. <laughs> yeah. Look at the, anything of the off white brand, if you look at it in any of those collaborations with Nike or Louis Vuitton, like they look like something that you should have been able to think about and mm-hmm. do yourself. But you know, I but think there's didn't. something to be you didn't. You know, and there's something to be said about the momentum and the being of the person who would just do it in the first place. And that's why Nike's like, you know, all over it and why his brand is now like, you know, he's the head of freaking Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. He's doing stuff with Balenciaga and all over the world, man. But and I feel like to take it back to like entrepreneurs, I feel like that's something that a lot of people like for me, I get imposter syndrome all the time where I'm thinking like oh, my stuff's not good enough or I don't know enough or whatever, but it's like there's a lot of people that I look up to and respect and, you know, I think that there's some super high level, but really, like, deep deep down, they're having the same sort of fears that I am. They're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be found out. I'm a fraud. I'm a whatever. And I think that's probably what holds a lot of people back from, like, making their own courses and stuff like that is they're like, well, I'm not really an expert. Like, there's a, there's so many people that know a way more than me. A million percent. A yeah. million percent. They have something valuable, valuable to offer. Mm-hmm. They may or may not know the tools and the strategies of how to, to put it out there in a way that's going to be most effective. But that's where someone like Dr. Kerry Rose comes in. But, like, they still have something valuable to offer the world. They have a perspective, mm-hmm. and they, they really have a monopoly on that perspective. Like, no one can see it the way that you do. Mm. And, like... The connection that you have with people, like that's a that's a special thing, you know, because not everyone can replicate that and create that kind of connection with anyone they they have a conversation with. There's magic there, and, mm-hmm. and so like 
I think just settling into that as a person, as an artist, as an entrepreneur, um, there's a lot of freedom there in itself. It's like mm-hmm. no one else can actually replicate this. They can't create that same thing um, that I could at any yeah. time. Where does charisma fall into online courses? Because I feel like there's a lot of really boring people that could probably tell you a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, and they'll snore you to tears. But Exactly, but the completion rate is so low because everyone's bored. <sighs> you know, I, I think it's interesting because now we have an opportunity for everybody to become an online personality but then that second word should probably be a part of it. <laughs> you know, and I yeah. actually had an interesting conversation with Michael Savage about this. He's um, one of the top salespeople or coaches with Tony. Um, Just one of Tony. Tony. Name. Tony Robbins. <laughs> Just yes, with we're on a first name basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. had a feeling because I don't, I mean, I was like Tony the Tiger. Tony <laughs> Tony. Yeah, he sells a lot Tony for Tony the, the Tiger. Tiger. Yes. So, That's the only um, Tony that comes to mind. I don't know. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like we were even, we were brainstorming, you know, and, and I was interviewing him from the book, but you know, one of the things that we talked about is like, what's the potentiality for someone to have an entertainer film their course instead, hmm. right? Like, okay, like, let's say you don't actually have a personality. It's, it's possible. You might have information. Maybe your personality is shit. No, but like my dad you is. suck as a person. Yeah, no. Your personality makes me vomit. My dad is brilliant. He has a patent in his name and he's dry. Just like mm-hmm. if you tried to get him to interview, if if I were him, like you would just be bored out of your mind already. Yeah. Right? Just it, like five minutes into a conversation. Sorry, dad. Um, But he th- he knows it. Burn. <laughs> the burns are hot over the here. The burns are hot. He's Need so some dry. ice for that burn. <laughs> so dry. <laughs> Um, but like if you have that personality and you know it but you have information and you want it to be a course is there somebody you can get to record it for you like let's say you set up the powerpoint slides and you hand a script to i don't know some university student that has is working on their theater degree and have them read the script and throw a couple hundred at them they would be excited and buying kegs and you would have your script read and, and it's people not an would, exact science either, right? Because yeah. I think like connection and resonance is a thing. Well, because there's people that yeah. crave that that stoic, boring. Like to that to them, that might mean professionalism and strength. Yeah, totally. You know, like totally. oh man, that, like we had. Um, we'll leave names out, but we names have a, we have a we have a, <laughs> we have a we have a client overseas, right? We have a client overseas, mm-hmm. and that we're doing a program with, and literally their request is to have a male do it like be uh, the, there be a male voice be a male yeah be a male voice that's like the the leader of it like be so that for their audience like they can have the experience of you know uh, this person knows what they're talking about and huh. you know professionalism like their ideas of what professionalism sounds and looks like we had to create that by having a voiceover artist you know that sounds and looks that way and even when we're going through the production of it, like they're like, oh, well, this this image doesn't look like enough professionalism or, or they're not the, you know. It, I had to it take just, out all pictures of millennials. It was so millennials. Like, I was like, this guy's beard is awesome. Yeah. You don't I mean, know. millennials don't mean, <laughs> millennials didn't equate to success for who they think their audience would equate to success, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's so relative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But I'd say personality You're definitely like, oh, helps. that's a black family. Oh, take those guys out. Those don't look like business people. <laughs> those are, they're joking. They're a joke. I'm like, whoa. All right now. <laughs> that's why we leave names out. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> About that. Names out. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's but totally no, it's happened. totally true. It's totally, totally subjective. Happened. And like for me, I there's like certain, I, I'm, I'm a big YouTube guy. I love watching YouTube personalities. And I think, YouTube that, is the best thing ever. Yeah, I think that's what really draws me in is being able to know that like I'm I can have a pre, an appreciation for you know for example we were watching Westworld last night I love Westworld because I know like because I'm over analyzing I'm like how many people did it take to make this like you know you see the behind the scenes stuff and you're like oh my gosh they built that building like they didn't go to Japan they like built that on the set like. I was thinking about that stuff, you know, but then there's also like I have a deep appreci- appreciation for watching like, you know, quote unquote YouTuber or like a personality where it's like I know that like 
there isn't a whole bunch of people putting in their two cents yeah. and all this. Like this There's is this guy's that. opinion. And I Peter want McKinnon, that guy's Casey opinion. N- N- Neistat are like, they're amazing at that. Exactly. They're even mm-hmm. like, some of it's on the phone, some of it's on the DSLR, but like, they're like on the streetcar, or they're hanging out and whatever. But like, just the documentation and the unraveling of their life or the, the building up of their life, like mm-hmm. he's doing with 368 in, in New York, like, it's amazing to watch. It, it's almost like you can, you can feel yourself being a part of that evolution. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. I love everything about that. Yeah, me too, man. And and where it's going with with internet technology and, and and how online courses play into that. I think in the next coming years we're really going to see a lot of evolution for that. Yeah. Because you can you can feel the momentum, especially as a creator and if you spend a lot of time on YouTube, it's like you can see that people are just grabbing a phone and grabbing a camera and and allowing the world to see them, you know, in lots of different ways that you you would have other like years ago people wouldn't even consider doing that. Mm-hmm. Like who would get on a skateboard and like, you know, hey, I'm just filming myself like falling down, the, you know, the road. Yeah, people were like, like, are you making a movie? What are you doing? Like, and now <laughs> it's almost like, you you know, you go to some place like LA and you see everyone with their phone in front of their face and you're like, oh, yeah. it's just a guy making a video. Well, well, well the, <laughs> the not special even, like, thing about that is like how to convert that energy as well. That's what I love about YouTube is like these creators that are on there, like they're people and they have a thing and they have a perspective. But then, like, they're able to channel that energy into a something that means money for them, really, in, in mm-hmm. choosing how their life goes. I mean, man, um, a buddy of mine, he's a producer, DJ, DJ M Squared, um, a real, real good friend of mine. Anyways, he just did this project with Baby Ariel. And I don't, she's like this, she's a social media influencer, but every time she posts, like, literally, and Gary Vee actually just referenced her in his new book, Crushing It. But like literally every time she posts anything, 200,000, 300,000 people like it. Like what can you do with that? If you put a thing in front of those people that they're hungry for you and all she does is like cell phone videos and she's got millions of followers, but like literally anytime she drops anything, it could be a t-shirt, it could be a course. It could be a brick. It could be a brick. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. She's literally just an individual going through life, being herself and sharing it with others, documenting it. And every time that she posts anything and she shares anything, it just flies off the shelves. And That's anybody amazing. can create that at different scales, but like YouTube is creating that for many, many people mm-hmm. at different scales. And it's not going to stop because it's just growing more. Mm-hmm. You know exactly. what I mean? Like people are like, oh, is it YouTube is saturated? Like, eh. It is no, 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 not at all. It's started. And that's the <laughs> thing is it, it's baffling when I like, you know, I find on Instagram or on, on YouTube, like in the, be- in the beginning of YouTube, you know, it was like, if you had like a million subs, like, I mean, t- to this day, if you have a million subs, it's insane. But I think there's, there's l- on YouTube right now, there's hundreds of people over a million subs, which is insane. Like o- over a hundred people have over 1 million followers on YouTube, like loyal followers. And the same thing goes on like Instagram. It's like you go on Instagram and you, you're like, this person has 5 million followers and I've never heard of them. Like That just happened what the other day. What is this? Yeah, it happens to me all the time. I'm like, how are these people famous and I've never heard of them? It like baffles me sometimes. That happened but, to me a couple days ago. I was yeah. watching this video and it, it, it was a Casey Neistat video. And he was doing this, um, I guess, this vlog on his phone with this guy. He's like, oh, and I have this guy with me. And I'm like, it was this guy. And he had just like the credit. I went and checked it out. 3 million plus, no, 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 30 million followers on Instagram. I was like, how have I never heard of this guy? He has 30 million. That's like Kim Kardashian level. Yeah. I've never heard of him in my life. Right. I was like, oh my God. Who this was is it? crazy. I don't even remember the guy's name now. He's That's some Canadian funny. singer guy. And I was just like. Oh, oh, oh. It was, um. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But yeah. I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that guy. That was the guy right there. Sean Mendez. Yes. Sean Mendez. Yes. yes. It was Sean Mendez. I was like, yeah. who's this guy? Because he did this cool video or whatever. I was like, who's this guy? Check him out. 30 million followers. It's like, yeah. oh, he's huge. crap. I think he's I've heard him crazy. before. Yeah, he's on the ra- he's like on the radio. Yeah, yeah. He I had started no idea on Vine. Him? No, I had he no idea. He started on Vine, which is crazy. He started making like yeah. little seven second you know things on Vine and Instagram and whatnot. Oh, he was one of those Vine killers. I think Dude, so. Vine I'm pretty because so, I remember like, seeing him on Vine. Oh yeah, I remember the guy from Vine, but I didn't know that was the same person. I didn't make the connection. Right? Yeah, I think it was him. 
Because I know yeah. I remember seeing him on Vine back in the day, and now he's like killing it. Killing but, it. Thirty million followers on Instagram. Yeah, but yeah, it is crazy. Like you know, people have these like cult followings, but they don't know how to monetize. They don't know how to turn it into something. Well, that's the beautiful thing about online courses is that you can essentially like, man, you can make it. You can monetize your thoughts. You can monetize your freaking ideas, dude. It's pretty powerful. Even if they're whacked out and they're not complete. Like, literally, <laughs> you could put it into a system of how you even arrived at that idea and the process for it mm-hmm. and make it available to the people that love you and are interested in, in, in what you're doing. Yes. I know earlier we were talking about kind of your system for completion, and I kind of wanted to go back to that because it intrigues me. And I don't know if that's proprietary. I don't know if we can talk about it, but... It's like Fight Club, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we won't drop it on duck. We won't Dr. talk Kira about completion. Rose. No, we can talk no, but, about it. But no, I was going to ask you because <laughs> it's, it's very fascinating to me. So, like, what are those things? Because we've talked about a few of them for sure, like making the videos shorter and more bite sized, like looking at the actual research of why you'd want to have a short, you know, video and stuff like that. Like, so what are some of those things that are. I mean, you guys are obviously flipping the numbers completely. Yeah. What are some of those things? Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because, like, when we first did that, that was before I did any research into completion. So it was just, like, just using the process that we build courses through that I was talking about, like, with the 500 research studies on how the human brain connects to content. Just that did it. But, like, for me, I look at online courses as a blend of education and marketing. Mm. So, like, it's not one or the other. It's this and that. And if we start to look at it as one or... Um, that's when things start to fall apart, right? So most of the time you've got people looking at marketing hardcore and ignoring the education component. And then you've got the other side where it's kind of, you know, people like myself, academics that are coming in and they're like, oh, we've got to teach them really well and then forget how to market completely or don't know, you know. But um, when I went off to try to write the completed course, I decided like, okay, I know what I know about marketing, but I'm not a marketer. Like who can I interview? Whose ideas can I get? So I interviewed over 30 different, you know, pretty high level marketers. We've got, you know, insight inside of the book from like Ryan Dice, Jay Bear, Pat Flynn, Jason Swank, like Katya's in there, Katya Sarmiento's in there. There's a lot of really cool people that are inside of it giving their two cents. And it, what was interesting to me is that a lot of these interviews, when I'd say, like, you know, why do you think it is that people don't finish it? They'd give me, uh, their perspective and it was like one of those things like you expect to when you're going through like qualitative data when you're doing these interviews you expect to see themes and patterns the same things coming up over and over again it's like oh bullseye I found I found the magic pill and it wasn't this at all it was just like all these different variables it's not one thing it's a lot of different things mm-hmm. you know like that all combine to form this I mean part of it starting with like just to give you like as much as I can in a little bit of time, um, part of it's just starting with like the true intention, mm. right? So even just looking at that, like what is your intention behind creating it to begin with? You know, are you creating the course to make money now? Um, are you creating yeah. the course to change a life? Mm. And that's like, I mean, that put energy, <laughs> intention yeah. is energy, right? And people feel that on the other side of it. Um, congruence is a big thing, you know, and so, you know, holding true to that intention, creating the course around it, but then also, you know, I have my clients write their landing page copy before we create their course, because a lot of times what happens inside of our industry is people will create these courses and then they'll say, you know, they'll turn to a copywriter, hire one and say, Hey, I need you to write me a landing page. That's going to sell this course. And they'll come back with it. And copywriters, some of them will even just follow the same formula they've done every time. So they don't, they're not checking yeah. to see what's inside your course. They're just trying to sell it. But if you've written your copy ahead of time and then you create your course and then you look back at this copy, I call it faux copy, but whatever, like you look back at your fake copy and you go like, okay, does this still match? Is this still congruent? Am mm. I still hand on my heart promising them that this is what's in it? Then you can take that copy and go, here, a copywriter that knows how to sell stuff. Here's my fake copy. This is what's actually in the course. Can you punch this up? Can you make this something that sells? I mean, I just think it's like a great way to like have expectations be in alignment. Like because mm. if you if you sell the, the damn thing and, and you know what that person thinks that they're going to get and experience, if it's not what they thought they purchased, now 
maybe they want a refund or maybe they yeah. they feel duped even if they don't want a refund. Exactly. And you they know? won't buy again. They won't buy again. Not only will they not buy again, but they might get really vocal about that. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I'm sure. that kind of person. Like if I get duped, it's game over. Like everything like I'm going full nuclear. We're going full to yell. Twitter. Yeah, I'm going to tw- I'll go to Twitter like and shake up every feather ever. This person hates vets. Yes. <laughs> That's his favorite Frontier line Airlines Twitter. against hates military vets. You know, I, I actually went to Twitter with that when I got pissed at them one day. I'll do it again if they act up. <laughs> Frontier. We literally stopped flying them ever for any under circumstances. Like, nope. Not we should have just done that anyways. I know. We should. It's just, you know. Anyways. We should have handled our logistics Boy better. My point is, is that like. <laughs> this is the boycott frontier cast. I don't, cast. They, I, don't, I don't think they hate vets, but like literally, I was so pissed. But that they just was hate my, black people. They don't hate vets. Yeah, <laughs> just black people. Oh my God. You are black usually vets. the or, only one it's on. It's a double, double. <laughs> Man, don't be a black vet. Oh, I mean, I do. Or a veterinarian either. They, they hate. I uh, get. All, I get. All all I'll be honest, man. I get really revved up about stuff with with veterans and how these companies act with them because <laughs> i'm serious i do like I, I spent eight years in the marine corps you know and like if you if you're the kind of person that's going to sign yourself up to potentially die or potentially kill just so that other people can function in your society i feel like there should it should come with more bonuses than like a dollar off at the movies <laughs> yeah and literally it's so true. like and and so like when you when they know you're a vet and I just feel like there's other there's better ways that they can handle it and they don't and that's just more of a society thing period that's not it's, really a frontier thing it's not yeah. a frontier thing <laughs> it's just, also, it was frontier but, was in the crosshairs yeah, but that also moment. like if they are not being intentional with their system like because there's some people that would be you know there's you know pe- there's disrespectful people out there they're like well how do I know what you actually even did in the military because I know a guy that didn't even get deployed and blah, blah, blah. He's a lazy fuck and like, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. they don't they, know that you were- They think they know. They, yeah, like they don't know that you were a Marine for eight years or whatever, because they're thinking in their brain, oh, this is just the blah, blah, blah guy or the, you know- I they, mean, even whatever. someone that works in the admin or post office, like by the time they even get there, they have to go through so many crazy things. By the time I even got to my first like even duty station, mm-hmm. I'd been injected with anthrax. I'd been through, I don't even know how many gas chambers. I'd been choked out underwater. I'd been like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I'd thrown grenades. Uh, I'd almost pissed and shat myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, like all these different. I had hit. I'd been hit with like a ricochet bullet. Like it, just crazy stuff. Like you know. And that's before you even get to the like the real stuff. Right. Right. And then like how that impacts you emotionally. And man, it's just crazy. Like. You, so I just feel like people don't really have an understanding of what it takes when you go into the military, especially any of the branches. It doesn't really matter. Like you could find yourself in a world of shit in the Coast Guard. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, it's a 30 foot wave. What do we do? We swim. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> oh my, this boat is capsized. Can you do it upside down? Like it's, yeah. yeah, it's, you just don't really know what you're signing up for. And so people that haven't, they just don't have any access to the world of what the and experiences are. And people will are. say, people will say, well, you know what you signed up for, and they you're don't, like, you don't, you don't know what you signed up you for. You really, really don't. You have no yeah. idea yeah. until you're there, and it's like a surprise. Like, oh, my God. People yeah. are dying. You're like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're going to a gas chamber? I didn't hear about this part. Yeah. Yeah. What's that CS gas like in your lungs? Can you breathe? No. Have yeah. you ever heard <laughs> spray in the face with pepper spray? Man, dude, they would do these, like, pepper spray trainings where it's like, Pepper spray, the way I knew it before going into military, was like in a little can. Mm-hmm. But like in there, it's in like a tank, right? Like a like a fire extinguisher tank. Like a fire extinguisher level, right? So, <laughs> so we brain we would do these trainings, right? Where it's like, okay, now you're gonna turn around and we're gonna spray in the face, and then you're gonna breathe it in, and then you're gonna run and you're gonna fight people, and we're gonna have the dogs chasing you. See how it works. <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. It sounds like a fucked up fear factor. Dude, it's, it, it's so real. And you're just adding more and more things. And then you're going to eat a spider. Dude. And then you're going to have to swing it's, across the It's stage. so real, man. 
<laughs> and like it crystallizes around your eyes. So even if obviously it's excruciating, it's like sticking your head in like a volcano. You know what I mean? Like the lava burning your face, but it doesn't like stop there. It crystallizes and then it hurts. And then if you go to like wash it off in the shower later, it just burns you all the way, all, like it burns your balls oh. off. It's insane. And it lasts for days. It's brutal. And it's inflammatory. So it expands your lungs. You think you can't breathe because you can't. <laughs> so oh, it's man. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You know what you're signing up for. Anyways, I digress. I'm just saying that there's a lot of don't know no. what you're saying. <laughs> Frontier, get it together. Yes. That's my point. You need to spray your front desk people with pepper spray and then maybe they'll get a newfound respect for the vets. That's Aww. literally that's literally the reason that they say that. Well, they say it's so that you get like an appreciation for the weapons yeah. that you're going to use or tools that you're gonna use on people. It makes um, total sense. I think it's just to harden you up and Yeah. You know. I Maybe wish that police training was a little things. bit more like that, to be honest. What's that? I wish that police training, like, because from what I've heard, I've listened to some podcasts with, like, um, some guys that were, like, uh, one guy in particular, he was, he's a cop in Baltimore, and but he was ex-military, and he's, like, he was talking about how, like, being ex-military was so beneficial, me becoming a police officer, and there's a lot of guys that work with me that... Dude. Don't have that training, and yeah, it's because they kind don't of really crazy, work with like, escalation of force yeah. the way that the military does. Like there's yeah, exactly there's ranges of escalation, mm-hmm. and the goal is to de-escalate everything because you can go full nuclear all the time. You know what I mean? And I've seen <laughs> that happen. But like, yeah, so it's like the uh, the de-escalation of force. Yeah, definitely. I have so many thoughts about that whole thing that yeah. I'm not even going to go into. That's a different it, podcast. That is definitely a different <laughs> podcast. I have a lot of thoughts. That's about it that sure. is the boycott frontier cast. My God, <laughs> Just kidding. yeah, I got a lot for that one. Yeah, but anyways, we digress. We definitely Courses. digress. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I you just know, knocked over the mic. Andrew's throwing mics around here. Yeah. Um, Did you say that? You know. It's good. It's okay. I can't I can't tie this in though, right? Because <clears throat> to loop back to courses and the whole military thing is I feel like most of the people that end up in the military weren't really aware of other options for how their life could be. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I know when I went in the military, like I I kind of felt like my my options were limited. Like where I was going to be able to go to school, if I was going to be able to go to a good school, a lot of that was like based around what I could do financially. And the next best option that was always presented to me was go to the military. You know what I mean? Like, but if I had been, you know, 17 now, like what would I, what would I do? Well, you know, I would probably just start creating I would go to YouTube, create a channel, do yeah. all the things, start sharing with my passions and my friends and my life and all this kind of thing. And eventually I'd stumble on someone like us, or Dr. Kerry Rose, and, you know, turning a course in, into the things that I'm passionate about. Like all of a sudden, you know, I would start creating my own freedom earlier. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have had the, you know, the idea that I my, my options were limited for certain and I could start painting the path that I want to go. It's interesting. I have literally three university degrees and my son is, he's about to turn 15 and he has Florida prepaid um, college funds. So his, his university, my daughter's university is all taken care of. And I was like, look, your, your finances are taken care of to go to college, but you've also going to spend like four years there. And if you want to like, you know, buy kegs and have parties, we can help you with that. But like, you don't have to go to college for that. So like, you can decide if you want to go down that path. It's not like an actual thing that you have to do. I mean, That's I know a cool he's thing like, for you to say. Well, I'm sure he, and like most of the time he's looking at me funny. He's like, well, mom, I'm going to go to college because it's the right thing to do. And I'm like, Okay, I know that's your father talking. Um, you know, <laughs> but also but, your father but, but doesn't. That's yeah, right. but, that, but that's it. What you're taught in high school, you know, like in high school, the whole time it's always being yeah. beaten that's down your track. throat. Yeah. that you're gonna that the next step is college. Like, I mean, and it make it, it's it, it makes might sense. Be, you're right? just going down the road. Like, what comes after twelfth grade? Student What's the knows. easiest thing to tell somebody? Yeah. Go to keep going to school, and that's the that's the toughest thing for graduates. I think is like 
it's, it's really the first time they haven't been in school. Yeah. Well, it's like this. Okay, here's here's a great period of your life where you're, you know, you don't really know how to be independent yet. You don't know how to manage finances. You're not even sure if you'll get up to go to class on time. You're not sure what you want to do. And oh my gosh, I mean, I can get free money if I just go to financial aid and apply for a loan. Freak, yeah, let's do it. And so, Burned I mean, kids, forever. Yeah, and so kids <laughs> just go in and they just keep signing up for it because we've sold them on this dream and the dream doesn't exist anymore in the same way. It just doesn't. Going to college doesn't get you what it used to get you. That and is just, my father's generation. Yeah. We're talking about like this is baby boomer lore, Yes. right? And it didn't even work then. If you look back at Think and Grow Rich, he specifically says like an education does not equal you know, financial wealth and stability. It's like, it's not, I don't, I'm not. Well, they don't even teach it. Them, no, they don't teach that They anyways. don't no. even teach it. No. Well, even if and you've just got to like be a clear, marketing degree. This is coming from Dr. Kerry Rose, who has three <laughs> university degrees. One of them's educational leadership. Um. <laughs> wow. Seriously though, that that is very, very, very impactful. Like just, just because coming from me saying that type of stuff, people are like, oh yeah, of course you can say that college dropout kid. You know what I mean? But it's like when it's, but you're so right because it's the, it's the previous dream and yes. not to discredit. And I think like, for example, my parents, like when I talk like that, my parent, I think my parents get personally offended and personally attacked because right. they have degrees. And so it's like, it's like, don't shit on my thing, man. Like I, I did this for four years, five years and am very proud of what I accomplished and it got me a good job, dude. Like don't write that off so easily. <laughs> nobody likes well, getting duped. Right. This is this is generational thought, right? So you mm -hmm. got to look back at it. Like if you go back, like on my dad's side, he has a degree and his father had a degree. But any back further, we're talking factory workers. Yeah. On my mother's side, that was like my grandmother had twelve kids. Out of all of those twelve, there's I can't even tell you how many hundreds of grandchildren. And me and two of my cousins have college degrees. They get busy. Out wow. of all of it, wow. right? And so and what it is is like your parents want what's better for what's they want for you better than what they had for them mm -hmm. they love you and so of they course. see this education path as you know if you've got people that are like still coming from like blue collar backgrounds it's like well gosh you know you have an opportunity to go get a college degree now because they have all these systems and places where you can go get it and i couldn't you can go have that house on the hill mm. that house on the hill doesn't work the same way i mean it's still there for you and you can still get it but that's not necessarily the path and no one's really being honest about that part of it. It's really tough too because they're not most of most of that generation, like they're not familiar with like what you could do with Shopify or Squarespace. Ninety nine percent of people aren't familiar like with what not, you can do on like, Squarespace. E no. No. Like they, they it's so hard to even put into their frame of thinking that like wow you could sell a thing from across the world that you don't own and drop ship it to people that are already looking for it and oh like start making money and you make the money in between but like the, it's so hard to like paint that world for them because of that frame of thinking you know it's mm -hmm. so antiquity and oh, antiquated antiquated that's the word Boom, shackle, um, okay. it's so antiquated thank you doc um, <laughs> that it's just so people can't even like grab onto it Yes. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't exist in the world. It's not a possibility. Yeah. If you really want to get yourself in debt and you're just graduating from high school, figure out how to get... to college right away. No, no, <laughs> no. Get yourself in good debt. Like figure out how to get a loan to buy a house and flip it. Right? Like, no, no. I, no, I'm with you. But the, <laughs> problem, but the problem is though, the problem is though, like you can't go and get a home loan if you don't have any prior credit, but you can get a school loan for $100,000. With no credit. With nothing. And you can't bankrupt yourself it's, out of it. it for me, it's, very, it, for me, it's really credit. predatory, right? But let, let's say, yeah, you figure out how to get credit, but you can get a school loan ASAP. Get a right? car, pay off your car. Yes, there's or pay your car notes on time. When you that. pay your car off, your, car, your credit score goes down, which I don't understand that part, but it's like then it's that you weird. don't have the bill anymore. I just, you know, <laughs> credit, I, I, credit is weird to me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like it's tough though. Like if you, you could go to school, and and I feel like for some professions, you probably should medical. <laughs> yeah, architecture. like if you're gonna be a lawyer, go to be a doctor, engineer. Yeah, if you think you want to try to fly yeah. to the moon by creating a rocket ship. Probably go learn how to be an engineer. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> you want to yeah. know where the bolts go. <laughs> but the thing, but the th <clears throat> but the thing is, is like you know, for like you said, for a lot of professions. But I mean, 
at the end of the day, it's all about like what you can learn and what you can do. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a university system is the only place where you could learn those skills or learn those things. It might be, it might be the best place. It might be the most efficient place, but it might not be. And it probably isn't now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just probably isn't. And that was one thing actually, um, Maya, who you guys met last night, she was on my podcast. And one thing that she said was, if I'm going to learn something, I either want to spend a lot of money so that I can learn it quickly, or I want to spend a little bit of money and kind of do it myself. And college is like the the worst of both worlds because you spend a lot of money and, and it you takes learn a lot it of time. Forever, <laughs> yeah. And, and there's it, no velocity, it, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it yeah. takes so much there's sense because no it's like it, it's like with like an online course or with you know someone who's like an expert, you could come to them. You know, okay, cool. I'm gonna spend a lot of money, but I'm gonna get exactly what I need. Or, you know, I'm gonna try to do it on my own. It might take a little bit longer, but I don't. At least I won't have to spend the money that I'll have to. But spend. you can see why, like for us, like that's part of the challenge, right? Is like the thinking is that, like, I'm gonna spend the money, and I'm gonna go to an expert, and I'm gonna get exactly what I need. And I'm gonna be able to apply it and get those wins. But like, what happens when? It doesn't work that way. You spend mm-hmm. the money and, you know, the idea of getting it done and learning it and being able to apply it is really great. But unless, you know, you, yeah. they actually deliver, that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it really impacts people in a bad way. For sure. And it puts a bad taste in their mouth. And then they're yeah. like, oh, I guess, now everyone's I guess a my charlatan, pipe tune is And now they're afraid to spend the money on that thing. And now they're not going to get that actual transformational piece that they needed to get to the next step. Mm-hmm. And now they go get a job and go back to the, you know, the old things that they think used to work and no longer necessarily do for most people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, their life sucks. I'm not Sounds trying horrible. to say that. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah no, I, no, I agree. You I know, agree. I just no. think you can hack the timeline with this. No, you definitely can. And, and I think podcasts like this give people that little bit of hope or inspiration or hearing from people like you guys that you know, not only are just saying the ideas, but also yeah. backing it up by creating real results. And by is, the way, it's not even amazing. like, it's not only just like small solo entrepreneurs that are like having challenges with this. We've had companies come to us that are selling a hundred million dollars in online courses and, and only million. having 3.9% people completing it. Wow. You know? They now they they're making money so they can throw it back into the marketing, but like tons of people are on their list or falling off their list, they have no idea how to get that transformation. So it's not like it's in a silo either. Where it's like only the people that are you know they're no. doing a little widget thing. Like these are some of these are huge companies. They're like I don't know. Well, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Like if you're a small time creator person, small time uh, course creator, and you're looking at these big companies that are doing it wrong, and yeah. you're following their models, yeah. you're like, well, they're selling millions of dollars with the courses. I, I should probably follow what they're doing. Yes, but it's exactly. the blind leading the blind. They don't even know yeah. what they're doing. Correct. Yeah, I think it comes down to back again to the intentions. You know, if Definitely. you're like your intention is like, how can I really serve? the people that I'm, I'm trying to share this message with, mm-hmm. you know, how can I do it the best of my ability? Then I think it'll lead you, lead you down the right path. Yes. To go back to Dr. Carey, what you were saying earlier about, um, about kind of now that college does not, like you were saying for your, for your kids, like you have this option. So what, for people out there that are at that crossroads right now in their life, because I know that there's young people listening to this that are in high school, trying to figure out what the heck to do, you know? <laughs> I'm going to get so many emails from parents. Um, no, it's, I mean, <laughs> what did you Dr. Say? What, what did you say? say? No, and, and I've actually, yeah. But I, I think this is really, you know, because all their life and probably in school right now and whatever, what their parents may or may not be telling them is, you know, go down this path and maybe it feels right for them. Maybe it doesn't. And so like mm-hmm. what kind of, you know, like what, what's the advice that you're giving to your own kids and maybe someone else can take this or, or even parents can take this and, and, and give this advice to their kids as well? Sure. So we haven't figured out 100% how to address it with my son, honestly. Mm. Um, but what we've showed him is there are other opportunities and other possibilities, mm. right? So when he was 13, my dad taught him how to code in three languages and take apart a computer and put it back together. Um, wow. So he's he's pretty gifted. Um, We've introduced him to e-commerce court, an e-commerce course where to um, drop ship and have your t-shirts printed and kind of like told him if he wanted to create 
some sort of a t-shirt printing company, we would go ahead and give them seed money for ads and to pay for the first bulk order, right? So I mean, we've told them like there's possibilities and we'll support them on that. Um, kind of like feeding the the idea of, you know, I, I met a couple across the table from us at a dinner we were at over at the ClickFunnels event one night and they were saying that their son has been making $4,000 a month on Amazon selling pet rocks for the last couple of years <laughs> and he's 17. Crushing he, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, and they have a company. He's got like the market cornered. Yeah, and they, Bro. his parents have a company and he's like, they're like, you know, what are you going to do? Or you can, you can ramp up this pet rock thing. You can go further. And he's like, oh no, I think I want to come work for you. And his mom's like, you won't make that much working for me. Like I've got full-time employees that don't make as much as you're making on Amazon right now. You know, so. He couldn't wrap his mind around that probably. Couldn't wrap his mind around that. Yeah. So I mean, I, I try to, you know, we try to feed um, Christopher's brain with all these other possibilities. And right now, actually, LaShawn introduced him to music production, took him to DJM Squared in the studio Very and cool. showed him that. And so, TSM like, Studios in Orlando. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen him like on Snapchat mixing beats now. So I'm like, okay, he's showing an interest in something. But I think that that's the thing is like, you just keep, as a parent, I don't have this shit down. But, but nobody does. Nobody does. <laughs> Secrets out. <laughs> right. Like each child uh, is different. It's another human PS, being. P.S. Parenting's hard as shit. Right. <laughs> I try to introduce him to other possibilities and, and let him be him. And if he goes to college, I'm not going to laugh at him if he gets student loans. I'm just going to be like, I tried. <laughs> right? <laughs> like yeah. I tried to help you. I paid for I your college. It. I showed yeah. you everything and you still want to do it? Still want to do it. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, no, but like that, you, but... you're totally right though. Uh, earlier, you're kind of like you can do the whole keg thing and f- living on your own thing and all that without the college part. Like, you don't need to do that. But no. like, no Still parent cool wants to see their child, uh, you know, starving, homeless, struggling. You know, and so that's the idea. We think that they're going to struggle if they don't do that. We're more than happy to figure out how to support them in a dorm room, but not how to support them to get them like to the point of getting a job. You know, but if you can't. It's just delaying the struggle, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like you're still in high school. Start to figure out how you're going to make money. Lots of people do. You know, like start figuring out, like, do you want to do e-commerce? Do you want to do something that's automated? Do you want to do something that, you know, brings in revenue to pay you for your art? Like, what are you mm. really actually interested and passionate about? And figure that out before you have to leave the nest. I think that's you kind know? of like the key. Is like, yeah. what, how can you, at, at what pace can you embrace your own passion? Mm. You know, and from and there. Figure out what your passions like, are. Yeah, like... E- well, even if you don't like know, it's like you can explore it. And he's kind of like in that phase, like, hey, yeah. I, I think I'm really interested in music. I'm mean, finding all these different artists and all these different production. Like, what tools would I need for that? And where are the resources for that? Like, he's trying to figure that out. And, and so, like, I'm I'm taking that opportunity to just kind of share more and more with him about what I know about that. Because I know, like, after he finds and kind of hones into whatever that is, then, then we have the... The know-how and the tools to like, hey, this is how you can get some momentum behind that. That's awesome. And yeah. and don't be afraid to take a shit job in the meantime. Mm. Like some people are afraid of hard work. I worked at a factory bending metal for a couple of months. Like and messed up finger. her finger. Totally. <laughs> I, I crushed it. I wouldn't suggest crushed this. It. I crushed Not it. Not in a good way. Not in a good way. I wouldn't suggest that for anybody, <laughs> but at the same time, like, so bad. you can wait tables, you can work at, like, Target. You, I'm not putting Target down, but I mean, like, you could go work at Frontier. I am putting <laughs> Frontier down. You could find a job just to make ends meet as yes. long as you promise yourself and truly stay focused to you not getting stuck there. I think those, like, quote unquote shitty jobs are kind of like motivation, too. Yeah. Because you realize, like, like, like the guy that this. sells the pet rocks, you know, <laughs> yeah. he might have not ever had one of those jobs. And so he doesn't have that contrast. Like, he yeah. literally has no perspective on, like, holy shit, I just worked all day and my paycheck is like, Three cents. Forty dollars. I owe them money for working here all day. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I waited tables and this guy didn't tip me or, or, you know, like whatever it might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that's a motivator. Yeah. Like Chris isn't at that stage yet either because he's very like entitled. Like mm. everything is kind of provided for him. He hasn't, he hasn't felt the the Mm. pain of that. Like, man, I got to figure this thing out. It sucks. And it comes out of necessity. A lot of the things of that, like very successful people, it comes out of necessity. It comes out of that when there's a will, there's a way sort of thing. And 
once the kind of the rug has been pulled, like, all right, done with college. Now you got to figure it out. And right. it's like, I don't know how to do any. I don't know how to make money. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know some stuff from school, but like, I don't have like, I, I don't know how to live and be an adult and survive. And yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know how to live and be an adult. And I've been an adult for some time. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know what you it's know. True, though. And you have figured out what you have figured out, right? And. I think that's probably the truest form of of what life looks like, even growing into an adult. Like even people that are super successful, you're like, wow, you're super successful. I wish I had done what you did, and I I wish I would have invested in in Bitcoin when I first heard about it in 2010. And like, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my God. The only thing that I'm like super hopeful about with Christopher is that he freaking loves money and wants to be rich more than anything else. Like he doesn't know what he wants to do, <laughs> but he loves money and he wants to be rich. And every time I look at him, I'm like, you're going to get it. I like, I actually feel like you're going to get it. And I support you on however you want to get there. That's awesome. You know, I think yeah. that's where a lot of people are too. And, mm-hmm. and people, they want that success level, but maybe they don't feel like they deserve it. Maybe they don't feel like it's realistic. So they kind of oh, lose that yeah, over time. But it's sad. not even the money, right? It's, it's literally people relate to it as the money. Like that's mm-hmm. the conduit, but really it's choice. Dig deeper. It's yeah. It's, the they're freedom, like, I want to be able to eat what I want, drive what I want, go where I want, have the experiences I want. Like they want to be able to access that. And the conduit is the money. Like, mm-hmm. so they, they think that they want the money. And he's kind of there, too. I think most people are. You know, yeah. they want the money. They really want they want the choice to do whatever the hell it is and not have any limitations on their life. Yes. Yes. Very powerful. Yeah. I feel like this is a good place to wrap things up. Doc we Carey talked Rose. about a lot of awesome stuff. <laughs> we did. I'm yes. Okay, so it's plug time. So now that everybody knows everything, not everything, but... A lot of stuff. <laughs> and a few things. Okay, let's recap. Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> Frontier. Oh, God. Don't pepper go to college. Spray. Don't pepper get spray. Don't spray in the face with pepper spray. <laughs> Don't go to college from from a doctor with three university degrees, though. Don't lock yourself in the most in important a distinguish. That's the most important thing to distinguish. Go if you need it, but yes. know that you need it before you go. Yes. I think what, um, uh, to go back for a second, I think that I, I've thought about this for a while. I think when I have kids one day, I'm going to make them, if they decide that they want to go to college, I'm going to have, I'm going to have them write up a case for why, like mm-hmm. write up, Ooh, I like, like that. give me the reasons. Like, why do you want to put yourself in debt? And- <laughs> yeah. Because, like almost <laughs> a good debate situation, many, many years. almost right. a good debate situation. Cause yeah. debate is the, is, you know, the way that you can really solidify your own arguments, you know, mm-hmm. cause if you don't know the opposition, then you don't know how to defend what your position is. So like, I, that's one thing that I think I'm going to do is like, all right, cool. I know all your friends are going, I know this is the expectation. I know this is what you've been taught and all this stuff, but like, Let's really boil it down. Like, what are the real reasons? What's going on? Yeah. Mm. Is it because your friends are all going and you want to have a fun time? Or is it because you really want to be a doctor or an engineer or, a, you know, whatever? Well, I think people so. relate it to success, too. Like, if I go to exactly. college, then I'll be successful. Yeah. And and I'm doing a good job. Like, yeah. I'm doing good at life now. Yeah. You know? but, if, but also, I would probably have them point, okay, cool, so you want to be successful point out okay here are some of our family friends here are some other people in our lives that who who do you point to that's successful oh this guy oh yeah he didn't go to college mm-hmm. oh yeah this guy <laughs> yeah he went to but package. like he didn't you know blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know and have them point to examples because it's like if you want to get to there mm-hmm. you know maybe backtrack a little bit and see what they did or whatever you know because yeah. mm-hmm. you're right people attach it with that but it's not always the case yeah yeah but um but yeah, so anyways, back to the back to plug time. So you guys have a book, right? We do. Very cool. So if people want to buy the book, where can they buy it? Amazon. Very cool. Isn't that neat? That is a very cool <laughs> they place. Can go, they can go to the, the completedcourse.com. Okay, cool. And the book is called The Completed Course, right? Yeah. Very cool. So people can buy that there. And then also if they want to work with you guys, where should they contact you? Yeah, I mean, for, for all information in terms of like finding out about courses and, and how to get support around that or any ideas or contacting us, they can go to of-course.us. And we also have a video training that'll help them if they're kind of in that place of, they know they should have created their course like five years ago, but haven't started it yet. 
you know, like sometimes people mm. get like that. It's like, oh, I have this thing I want to do. I know I want to do this thing. And then like just never do the freaking thing. So anyways, we created a video training for that. But what's the... They can access that on the website as well. On the Of Course yeah. website. Yeah. The yeah. link's up. Gosh, she's so good. I love there her. So good. So clutch. So Such clutch. a good partnership. Yeah, I love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. Otherwise, you can find us on, you know, Instagram, on Facebook, inter- interwebs. But, you can yeah. find you know. Sean tweeting. Just kidding. Where, is the, where are you guys most active? Instagram? Facebook. Facebook? For me. Facebook, yeah. Dr. Carrie Rose. Hit my messenger bot up. There we go. <laughs> and LaShawn Isn't Facebook like as Carrie well. Rose dot 50 or whatever? Why did, why did you have that? I'll, your I'll own link anyways. it some. I'll, yeah, I'll link, link it in the show notes. Up. People it's will be able to find stuff. it. People will be able to find it. For sure. <clears throat> I'm making weird faces over here. Instagram y'all. and Facebook, though. <laughs> that's where we get down. Yeah. There we go. That's where it all goes down. Very cool. Yeah. Well, any Andrew, other man? Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, any, man. Any other last things that we didn't? Uh, parting words. Yeah, I want to do some parting words. What do you think about that, Doc? I have my own, but why don't you do yours first? Yeah. <laughs> uh, parting parting words for me is that like, what I'm most crazy about is seeing people really go after their thing, and it could look a lot of different ways. But like, there there are opportunities for you to turn whatever your idea is, whatever your passion is, into something that can fuel and feed your life. You know. In terms of money and revenue, right? And, but also, like, choosing how your days go. Mm. Like, we choose how our days go. We're in Atlanta right now because we're choosing how, choosing how our days go. And that happens a lot of different times. When we had that hiccup with Frontier Airlines, like, they literally, like, we were going to fly back to Florida. We were in San Diego. And they were like, oh, sorry, it's canceled. And so I went to go, like, try to find another flight. And they're like, oh, there's not going to be another flight for five days. What? It in was San a nor'easter, Diego. but it didn't affect Still. San Diego or Florida. Listen, it doesn't matter the reasons. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter the reasons. It was like, we are not. We can't get you out of here for another five days. So we stayed in San Diego for another five days and just enjoyed ourselves. And like the, the, the ability not to a, be able to do there's that. There's worse places to get stranded. I know, no, right? San Diego is amazing. <laughs> I was excited, yes. right? And we got to spend more time and see friends and all this but kind of stuff. But if you didn't like, have this flexibility, it would have been a major inconvenience. It would have been, been horrible, yeah. right? Yeah. It would have been sure. like... You know, so sure. I just think there's, there's just chase after your thing and know that there are mechanisms to turn whatever your idea, your passion is into something that can, can grow your life. You know, I love it. Yeah. My wrap up would just really be um, reference to Pinocchio. So Jiminy Cricket, always let your conscience be your guide. Like if you hear that voice inside your head uh, telling you that you need to be doing a thing, then go do the thing. And if you need to be stopping, you need to be stopping and just listen to yourself and trust it. I love that. I love that. Yes. Well, LaShawn, Dr. Carey, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. I, w- I wanted to say show, and then I said podcast, with podcast. <laughs> being on the podcast. The podcast. Thank you. Scoop. Yeah. Poopity <laughs> scoop. Poopity scoop. Thank you for being on the poop Diddy scoop podcast. We should have poopity scoop as part of the wrap up. Exactly. Exactly. Poop poop. Everybody, all together. Poop Diddy scoop. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. Boom. There we go. Thank you, Dr. Carey and LaShawn, for being on the show. Make sure you go follow them on every social media channel known to man. They're super kind people who just really want to see their clients and students succeed. Um, You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. If you go to their website of-course.us, you can find the links to their social media handles and accounts. If you're bummed because this episode is over and you want to keep listening, then definitely go check out episode 90 with another power couple, Ayaz and Zenit Momin. And Ayaz is the founder and um, lead designer brains behind Threads and Beams, an Atlanta-based company that not only creates super high-quality custom shoes, bags, and accessories, but they actually donate 50% of their profits to go towards community enrichment in Atlanta and abroad. And his wife, Zenit, is a traveling registered nurse. And she's also a certified personal trainer and nutrition specialist. She's also my favorite coach on the Fit Radio app. She's basically a freaking badass. Badass. I'm losing my voice. If you've been following my Instagram, you would know that I actually just got a handmade custom bag from them, from Threads and Beams. And um, it's pretty freaking awesome. So go check that out. episode out. It's episode 90. 
Episode 98 is coming up next with my friend Tori Madison. She's pursuing a master's degree in integrative nutrition and health coaching, and she helps other people overcome fears and limiting beliefs to awaken their passions and rise from pain into purpose. And she's the co-author of the book, 20 Beautiful Women, 20 Stories That Will Heal Your Soul, Ignite Your Passion, and Inspire Your Divine Purpose, and also the ebook, Three Daily Habits to Holistic Health and Heart Healing. And after tragically losing her younger brother a few years ago, um, she was, you know, absolutely devastated, absolutely crushed. But I think that that was the catalyst that really set her off on this journey of physical and spiritual healing. She has an amazing story, and we laughed, we cried, and it got really vulnerable, but it was amazing. And that episode will be out next week, so stay tuned. If you want to support the show, you can go to my website. You can go to um, my website. You can find all my social media handles and accounts. And I'm losing my voice. Um, you can also go to iTunes. That really helps me out. Go to Apple Podcasts. You can find um, the ratings and review system there where you can leave me a five-star review. You can also leave me a little comment there, um, kind of just you know reviewing the show. I do read all of those, and it really helps me out to have more ratings um, in the rankings of iTunes and Apple Podcasts and all that. So if you're on an iPhone, go to the Apple Podcasts app and please rate it five stars. That really helps me out. Also, um, like I said, if you want to follow me, you can find me on my website. I've been posting a lot on my Instagram recently, so definitely go check that out. Also, um, if you want to share it with a friend, you know, like word of mouth kind of thing. People are always asking about recommendations for podcasts. I would really appreciate it if you would mention my name. Anyways, that's all I got, folks. Thanks for listening, and I will see you all next week. Frontier Airlines against hates military vets. You know, I, I actually went to Twitter with that when I got pissed at them one day. I'll do it again if they act up.